I've created uh, two use cases here and two actors and what I'd like to do now is add some richer information uh, to the use cases and there's a variety of ways of doing that but in this case um, what I'm going to do is just add some comments which should enable um, either myself or other designers analysts later down the uh, train to you know, understand what this use case is, is actually about. So um, I've selected the use case cook food and down in the properties tab down here I've selected comments. I mean there's a whole variety of these uh, sub tabs but the one I've selected is comments. This is a comment I want to be actually owned by the, um, the cook food use case so I'm going to add an element. And of course you could just use free text here but I prefer to use a regular pattern of annotations which uh, sort of add rich information to use cases. The first one I would usually write is a goal and this really is the intention of the actor who would use this. So the goal here is um, the user wants hot food quickly. So this is sort of illustrative um, goal for what they want and that appears here down in the owned comments. Um, I usually add something like a precondition. So let's add another one here. Um, and for example it could be that um, the microwave must be powered with electricity. It's more physical description rather than software. So I've added a precondition. Um, post conditions are those things which must be true after the food food is uh, sorry after the use case is conditioned and this completed. And in this case obviously it's about um, cooking the food. So I'm going to say post condition food must be hot that's what we're trying to achieve afterwards and of course you know in a uh, computer system or a control system this could be anything to do with the uh, the internal or external state um, that you're trying to achieve uh, as a result of this uh, this action um, you can add a uh, non-functional type information here so so, for example, I could say something about frequency. Uh, let's say expected to run times per day. So this um, is really more like a performance requirement rather than a um, functional requirement. Um, and those, you could have lots of different sorts of performance requirements. You could have uh, the time, something about volume, something about reliability, available, you could put availability, you could make notes on um, security here if that was critical to your, um, to your system. And so what I've got here is uh, now a list of those comments. Now, I should say that these are what you would call opaque to the model. And what that means is that there's nothing um, within this tool or within System L which allows these things to have their integrity checked. They're not a sort of an intrinsic part of the model, but which can be reconciled against another part of the model. They really are just um, human comments. There's information tagged, um, you know, next to that. So, so they're useful and they're informative, but they're nothing that can be used automatically by the tool to um, check the integrity. That's not true of other features of SysML where one part of the model can be checked against the other automatically and in fact that's one of the principal um, values of, of using a tool like this.